Good morning. How is everybody? Terrific. Good. All right. Please hold your applause until the end of the show. Thank you. <laughs> All right, if you haven't guessed by the most awesome uniform that Bass Pro Shops provides, I am the diver here. I am Diver AJ. I'll be getting in the water to feed the fish for you guys today. Before I can do that, I do have to go upstairs and get the rest of my equipment on. While I'm upstairs, Diver Rollin over here is going to tell you about the other animals and exhibits that we have in the store. So sit back, relax, and enjoy, and I'll be right back down. All right, good morning, guys. As you said, my name is Diver Rollin. I'm a lucky one because that water is a nice, balmy 58 degrees, and it's way too early in the morning to be swimming around in that. So I'll stay out here and tell you guys about the other animals and the exhibits you can find throughout the store. And we have this small a crowd. I usually encourage pretty much an open forum type thing. So if you guys have any questions as I'm going through, definitely feel free to jump in, and I'll do my best to answer anything you guys want to know. I'll kind of start at the other end of the store and work my way this way. If you guys came in the grand entrance and you hang a right and go down the ramp into our fishing department, down where the boat sales are as well, the first exhibit you come to is our Louisiana Swamp Exhibit. It's 25,000 gallons split up between two different enclosures. Now, the main tank there to the left of the ramp houses a lot of fish you'll normally find in a swamp environment. Most notably, we do have one of our very large alligator guard down there. Uh, the one down there goes about between six and a half and seven feet long, coming in somewhere around 180 pounds or so. And he shares that tank, she shares that tank with uh, one 50-pound blue catfish. We have one red fish in there. We have several largemouth bass, uh, some smaller game fish like crappie, bluegill, white bass down there as well. Now, if you jump across the ramp into that little horseshoe-shaped tank there in the middle, uh, that is our alligator basin. Without a doubt, the most popular attraction we have here at the store. And it's the home of our six American alligators. All of them are between three and four foot long. They've been in there for a couple months now. If you guys were here, Oh, three or four months ago, you saw a big 10-foot white alligator down there. He has since retired down to South Florida. He got a little big for his tank down there, so we exchanged him for six much smaller ones that are much more entertaining to watch because they do move around quite a bit more than he ever did. But that's where you can find those guys. Now, if you make your way on up the ramp, right in front of the grand entrance you came in is the newest exhibit we opened. That's our boardwalk aquarium. We have about 20,000 gallons. Uh, houses several trout we have in there. We've got rainbow trout, we've got brook trout, and then we've got those yellow rainbow trout that you see a lot of people confuse them with albinos, but they don't have that red or the pink eye that an albino would have, but they're awful close. Now, if you move on past that one on down the main aisle, you come to the oldest exhibit we have. It's the one we opened back in 1982. That's a 20,000-gallon entrance aquarium. Again, houses some of our bigger animals we have here. We have the other two alligator guard. We have in our collection in there. Uh, one's a little bit smaller than the one in the swamp. Comes to about six foot, 140 pounds or so. One's actually a little bit bigger, closer to about. You know, I think you actually measured in about seven foot two inches. And there we got him. Or her, I guess. Uh, came in. We're guessing her beard somewhere around 190 pounds or so. Now, I mean, they both share that tank with. Our largest, well, heaviest animal we have, that is our alligator snapping turtle, uh, coming in at about 200 pounds, estimated to be right around 100 years old. He's been with us since 91, I believe. He was actually caught in some guy's driveway down in Mountain Home, Arkansas. been with us ever since. If you've been seen him in the last 20 years, he's moved around to a few different aquariums, but now he's hopefully up there in the entrance aquarium to stay because I, for one, do not want to try and catch a 200-pound snapping turtle again. So, anyhow, move away from that one, on down into our hunting department, and next one we come to is our Missouri snake exhibit. Down there we've got eight native Missouri snakes on display. None of them are venomous. Uh, they are all common to Missouri. We've got about five different species in there. We keep some of our more colorful ones in the little middle enclosure down at the bottom to kind of give people a chance to see something they wouldn't normally see out in the wild because it's not the most common snakes, but uh, I think currently we have a red milk snake in there. Uh, that's where you can find those. Now next, if you make your way into the camping department, the next where you come by is to the right of the stairs. That's our 20 or 16,000 gallon water wheel exhibit. And home to some more trout. We've got rainbows, brooks, and browns in there as well as about a half dozen yellow perch as well. Now it's also the home of our three live ducks. We've got a male and female hooded merganser as well as one female wood duck, and again, if you go out there today, that's where you'll find them. They do have a habit of traveling at night, so tomorrow whenever I come in, I do not know where we will find them. <laughs> Probably somewhere in the camping department, but as far as which body of water, that's kind of up to them. But the next one is the uh, 
Ozark Stream exhibit runs the entire length of the camping department. That's separated into four different pools. The very first pool, we have one largemouth bass. We've got <laughs> two Atlantic salmon and a few bluegill. We used to have three Atlantic salmon. Coincidentally, our largemouth bass has gained about half a pound since the last week. Uh, but we now have two Atlantic salmon. <laughs> uh, anyhow, the next one down is our yellow per, uh, yellow rainbow trout we have down there. We've got about four more down there. And then the very last pool is the home of about a dozen little baby muskies. Uh, musky down there between 12 and 20 inches. They will continue. They will continue to grow until they're upwards of four to five feet in length. Of course, we will not fit one in there, let alone 11. Uh, but they will eventually have to be moved around, probably at different stores because we don't have the uh, the tanks to keep them all. But for now, they're, that's where they're all at. Now, if you go all the way upstairs to the Hemingway's restaurant. That's where you're going to find our saltwater aquarium. Definitely the most colorful, most unique tank we have. You're going to see about 200 fish in there, 75 different species. They represent every shape and size and color you can possibly imagine. So if you get a chance, I highly recommend going up and looking at that one. It's definitely the, the coolest looking one we have. Now, you don't have to eat or drink at the restaurant. A lot of people say, thank if you go up there, you have to order something. Tell the host or hostess you're there to see the fish tank, and they'll escort you back there, and you're welcome to sit there as long as you like. Now, lastly, is this one right here behind me. By far the biggest one we have here in the store is 50,000 gallon waterfall aquarium. It's a two story waterfall that crashes into this tank and actually fills up and overflows out into the basin, out the doors into your left. A lot of the same fish out there are the same fish you'll see Diver AJ feeding here. As soon as he gets down and starts feeding them, I'll kind of work my way up through the bottom and help you guys identify. Again, with this small crowd, definitely encourage questions as we go. I'm keep it pretty informal once he gets in the water. It should be any any time now, but it looks like we're going to add some people to our show. But maybe not. But, uh, yeah, until he gets in the water, I'll kind of tell you guys what he's going to be feeding and to kind of pay attention to the fish that we'll be eating from him because all the fish we have in here, about 130 of them, you're going to see about a dozen of them actually eat from the diver, unfortunately. Several of them get pretty shy whenever the diver gets in there and run and hide as far away from everybody as they can get, and you'll see them run as far away as he get started, but... Again, the type of food he's got, he's got these little brown bricks he's going to throw out. It's a gel food that he's got. Uh, a lot of the bottom feeders are really going to enjoy it. You're going to see a lot of lake sturge and the catfish. Uh, down below, that aquarium sits about a foot below where you guys can see. We've got several buffalo down there that, that, that really enjoy that gel food too. But he's also got some live feeder fish in here before long. You can already start seeing them get into formation. Our largemouth bass will be sitting right at the top of that window waiting for him to release his feeder fish where they will come crashing down. and mostly into one another fighting over a single fish, but as soon as he starts reaching in that white mesh bag, definitely pay attention, because that's without a doubt the most entertaining part of the show. But usually we get started with the two biggest fish we have in here. It's our two big blue catfish. Uh, the one I think he's trying to get right now is the bigger of the two, coming in at about 85 pounds. Uh, she was actually caught out of Table Rock Lake. Oh gosh, I wish I could tell you the year. I can't remember the year off the top of my head. Back handful of years ago now. But she came out to Table Rock Lake in about 85 pounds. Uh, the biggest fish we have in this aquarium, actually prior to getting our alligator guard, she was the largest fish we had in this entire store. Uh, she also shares that with one other blue catfish we have. A little bit smaller, uh, but does have quite a big hot belly on her. So I'm going to tell you she weighs about 65 pounds. That's what she was whenever we put her in there. As big as she has gotten, I have little doubt that she's exceeded that weight, but just to keep them from getting stressed out. We don't pull fish to keep keep records of their weight because as long as they're fat and happy, then it doesn't really matter to us how much they weigh. But when we put her in there, she was about 65 pounds. You can see her. She's a little bit darker blue color and again, has developed quite the pot belly, so I have a little doubt that she has definitely exceeded that weight she got put in there as. And then that one is trying to scare across, kind of swimming away from us there, is our very large channel catfish. Uh, not near as big as a blue catfish, but by channel catfish standards, coming in at about 25 pounds, still very, very impressive. Uh, generally, they're much darker in color. Uh, that one does have a little bit of a blue tinge to her, but normally you're going to see like a dark gray or a, almost a black whenever they get that large. Uh, but that one is actually the state fish of Missouri. If anybody really cares about facts like that, let's kind of tell me to tell you. Uh, but again, very impressive by channel catfish standards. That's one of them that usually uh, gets as far away from the diver as it possibly can because it does not like 
associating with us for some reason. But as you can see by her size, she definitely eats during the week very, very well whenever we're not in the water. Uh, now I think he's going to try and dig up some of these buffalo fish we have in here. Or maybe not. Maybe he's going after the... No, get the lake surgeon. All right, those are the lake surgeon we have. Again, those guys are definitely the most unique fish we have. A lot of people confuse them with sharks. Uh, they kind of share that same body structure that a shark does. But as you can see, they have those four whiskers. And they have that mouth at the bottom of their head that opens downward. It's pretty neat because... Versus a lot of bottom feeders, like the carp and the buffalo you see in there, yes, their mouth is on the bottom of their head, but it doesn't protrude downwards. There's that, that mouth will actually shoot out about four inches or so, and it feels like a very, very strong vacuum. They don't have teeth, so you'll see them grab a hold of his hand and hair and the regulator and everything they can get a hold of. But, like I said, it feels like a very, very strong vacuum is what that, what that mouth feels like whenever it latches onto you. Uh, those guys, all of them we have in here are about ten years old or so. Uh, which, and about four foot long, normally make them a very old and very large fish. But these lake sturgeon, again, something else that's very unique about them is they're a very, very long-lived species. It's not, they're actually not going to fully mature for another 15 years or so whenever they can start reproducing. Uh, and they'll continue to grow. At that point, they're usually about five foot long, 80 pounds or so. But they will continue to grow, and they can live upwards of 150 years old, continue to grow all the way up to around eight foot long and over 300 pounds. So. If we take good care of them, we can certainly keep growing those guys out for a little, uh, probably much longer than I'll be here, undoubtedly. Uh, but it looks like he's reaching into the bag to get some of those feeder fish. I'll kind of move up in the aquarium a little bit uh, to some of the more predatory fish. And like I said, you can already see the largemouth getting into formation. And uh, looks like that northern pike is pretty interested as well. Uh, again, you can see our, our largemouth bass in here, definitely the most popular game fish we have, not only in this store, but throughout the country, the most sought after game fish. We've got several of them in here that go over 10 pounds. Uh, we've got two that are 10 pounds, we've got one that's about 12 pounds, and one that's about 14 pounds. And you can see one of them eyeballing him right there, waiting on the, to get its chance. But those guys, again, something that not a lot of people know, they're not actually members of the true bass family, they're the largest members of the sunfish family. So. If you can believe it, they're going to be more closely related to a crappie or a bluegill than they would be a true bass. Uh, something like the striped bass you see running across the back there, or some of these white bass you see hanging, hanging out about knee high. Uh, but again, still we have some very, very impressive largemouth in there that hopefully we'll get to see come down and eat, even though our very large ones tend to hide underneath that bridge whenever we get in the water, but he may get up there and try to scare them out for you guys. And I hope he does because we have one that's about 12 pounds in here to get probably has the best appetite of any large mouth we have because about three months ago we put about 30 white bass in here. We're down to a, down to 11 white bass in here, primarily because of our 12 pound large mouth. And I got her out yesterday and she did have quite the bulge in her belly, so we may be down to 10 white bass. But I haven't counted lately, so that's where I'm guessing uh, that little gut has come from. Well, again, you've seen a couple of big predators following them around waiting for those feeder fish. You did see our northern pike. That's that real long, gold-colored fish with the spots along its side. It's got a mouthful of razor-sharp teeth. We've got one diver that found that up the hard way to make sure you get your hands away from the feeder fish fairly quickly. Uh, one of our divers spent an afternoon in the hospital getting about seven stitches because that northern pike went through the feeder fish and into his hand. So that is why you see diver AJ wearing gloves. Um, you know, something that we hope doesn't happen, but occasionally these fish get pretty amped up and see our hands and realize that food comes from our hands, so they uh, tend to go too close for comfort sometimes. Was that during the show? Yeah, that was during the show whenever he got bit by that pike. Now, I've been, we have a 10-pound walleye in there that I've got on the wrong side of it before, and fortunately for me, the walleye, they have more of like a needle-type tooth that doesn't really slice and tear like a northern pike does. Uh, so that tooth just kind of went through my finger and into like, there my bone. Oh, my. You yeah, see there it? he goes. <laughs> but uh, again, we also have, like I mentioned earlier, we have two walleye in here. One that's about 10 pounds, definitely the more aggressive of the two. Hopefully that he can get her to come up and eat. This is actually my favorite fish, even though I'm a good buyer. She's an absolutely beautiful fish. If you've ever seen a walleye, they have that real cool gold or green color, almost like a camouflage pattern to them with white tips at the bottom of their tail. 
And then along with the 10 pound, we have one that goes about six pounds. It was actually caught at Stockton Lake back in December, I believe. A gentleman was kind enough to donate it to us, and it's been in our aquarium since February after it made it through the quarantine period. So I always like to point that one out because we do tell a lot of people that we take good donations. Uh, if you catch a big fish, definitely give us a call. We don't know what to do with it. And we'll put it through a quarantine period, and hopefully, there she comes, it's coming up right there. And did not get the feeder fish, but you got a chance to see her. Again, one of my favorite fish, just because they are so beautiful there. And so they have that real dark gold and greenish color to them. It's pretty unlike any other fish we have in this exhibit. But we've also got one bowfin in here. Unfortunately, it does hide very, very well from us. If you've never seen a bowfin, the one we have is about 24 inches long or so, and it's got a real long dorsal fin that runs the entire length of its body. That's one that you will have to go out to our waterfall basin to see. We have one that comes out fairly often out there, so if you've never seen a boat fin, go check those, that guy out out in the basin. But other than that, I think I've covered everything. We've got a few rough fish in here to help keep the aquarium clean. We've got some carp in here. We've got like I said, three different types of buffalo fish. Uh, we've got a couple freshwater drum in there as well. Uh, there are those little tan colored ones that come in about 15 pounds or so. I think that covers about everybody in here. Like I said, keep it pretty informal. If you guys have any questions, that's what I'm here for. I think he's got a little bit of food left to <coughs> feed out, so you're welcome to definitely come up to the stage and kind of see, get a little closer look. Or, so if you guys have any questions, that's what I'm here for. Alright. All I can say, he's got that out. If you guys listen to my announcement, I did say I had a special guest to bring out. I don't know how you guys feel about snakes, but if you don't like them, I tend to give people a few minutes to get out of the room. Uh, but I brought with me the largest snake we have in our collection. It is a big black rat snake. Uh, definitely a uh, one of the nicer ones we have, but I will keep very close hold of it. So if you guys get nervous around them, I'm going to try and keep them contained. That one was actually hatched here in our store with us and been with us since 2008. And grown that big. So I'll go ahead and get him out. Like I said, you guys are welcome to look around and watch AJ feed out the rest of whatever he has. Can you wait, Jeff? This is about 2008. This is the only one we have that was actually hatched here at the store. Yes. In just four short years, outgrown every snake we have. I have no doubt that irregular feeding every week has assisted in her growth. She's continuing to grow. And what what kind morning. is it again? It's a black rat snake. A black rat snake. Yeah. Well, the most common snake you'll ever find here in Missouri. And I didn't. The ones we've had don't have all those other colors on them. Yeah, they can kind of vary a lot. They just, whenever they're born, they're actually more of a sandy color, like a gray or tan uh -huh. color. And then this one never really lost her pattern, but they will have pat like these diamond-shaped patches uh -huh. along her back. A lot of times they'll even see her. She's, I like bringing this one because I can kind of point out the different shades they'll have. She's even got some red scales to her as well. So, she's beautiful. Yeah, she is. He so said they can kind of vary from that jet black color to the this more patchy color to them.